Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network Forgive the interruption, but I believe this requires your attention. If you ever believed Captain America was on the U.S. Olympic soccer team. If you ever thought that the Winter Soldier was that brace yourselves guy on the internet. And if you ever wondered just what would a raccoon do with a machine gun. Then don't let another week pass you by without tuning into Mighty Mighty Marvel Marvel Geeks. Geeks. Mighty Marvel Geeks is your show about all things Marvel. With news, rumors, commentary, and interviews. As well as our weekly recommendations on what to pick up on New Comic Book Day. Official consulting hours are between 8 and 5 every other Thursday. That's Mighty Marvel Geeks on WeebyGeeks.net, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind. So if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast. And, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number or, um, go to nami.org or, um, whatever resource you can find, but just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out and try not to be alone. Uh, also if you, um, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do uh like harm yourself or others definitely reach out that's a huge red flag and um lastly please do not um replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show again if you need help please reach out and uh get the help that you need or contact us we can try to help you find the help that you need Sucks to the last drop Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck A light sucks every Monday And all the way to Sunday But I wouldn't have it any other way I don't care how you're doing What's up for how's it hanging? This world, one last drink. Life sucks all of the time. Stick it up, your sunshine, and then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds. Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. My name's Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we got Hanno and Brian. Hi, guys. Yay, Jen. Hi. <laughs> That's me being uh, positive and uplifting. I like it. Do you feel it? Do you feel the booing, the support? I, I do. I love and, and, it. And not because Jen needs it. I just right. felt like doing it. Yeah, right. Well, I appreciate that. It's always nice to have a... Warm welcome back. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, since I was gone last week, of course, I'm going to start us off per our usual rules. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So let's take us back a little bit. Doodly, doodly, doodly. <laughs> oh, Lord. I know. Taking us way back. A little Wayne's World reference there. Yep. But, <laughs> um, so we had the podcast. Then right after that, um, the Friday after that, I had my dad and my brother over because my brother had to work the holiday. So I had them over for dinner and we did our dinner and gifts and stuff. And oh, cool. Yeah, it was really fun. So unfortunately, my brother had to work the 21st through the 2nd. So, yeah, he Oof. kind of screwed over <laughs> at his work. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure how that happened because he got like two days off at Thanksgiving. And so the guy said, you can have Thanksgiving. I can have Christmas. He got two days off. The guy got two weeks off. <laughs> not sure how it quite worked, but. Sure, sure. Regardless, you know, it's a sheer thing. <laughs> um, but regardless, my brother is a really nice man and uh, stuffed up when they needed him to and did his part. So kudos Took to him for, for the team. Doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> He did awesome. So anyways, um, yeah, so it was just the four of us, my husband and I, my brother and my dad. And um, it was it was really uh, it was really nice because a lot of times the holidays get very stressful for me, um, as we've talked about on the show before. And I get a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, just stuff that. Uh, gets in my way of truly enjoying the people I'm with and then truly enjoying myself. And I was really able to kind of get outside of myself a bit and just be present and just really enjoy, um, enjoy the moment, enjoy my time with my family. Um, I got some really awesome gifts. My brother got me a weighted blanket. Um, so yeah, so I got, how's a, that work? It's awesome. Is it working good? I love it. I've actually got ended up over the holiday um, season. I ended up getting two of them. I got a ten pound one and a fifteen pound one. Wow! So, they so, actually have like weight ratings. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they are a little bit. The ten pound one is a little bit smaller, so it's like a three by six, and then the fifteen pounder is more of like a four by seven ish. So hmm. it's just a little bit bigger. Um, but I've been loving them. The only downside that I will say is get yourself in your position before you put the blanket on top of you, because adjusting your position with the blanket on top of you, you end up pulling muscles. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like it's, it's that weighted. Yeah. Now keep in mind, I am not the healthiest of people. So, you know, <laughs> but you do have muscles. I do have muscles. They function. <laughs> they do function. But somebody who like, works out on a regular basis may not struggle as much as I do <laughs> being under this blanket. Let me tell you. I just, I just, it gives me this image of like, like, I can't move. The blanket's on me. I can't, it's like, like a really bad cartoon or something. Like Jen's the only person who needs a spotter for her blanket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. The blanket dropped. Yeah. Oh, oh my ankle's not quite right. Oh, oh, cramp, cramp. Oh, man. I laugh because it's true. I have given myself cramps on this stupid blanket. Wow. But... It's... It's, it should be added to to some Dungeons and Dragons adventure, right? <laughs> like, hey, just throw the weighted blanket on them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need a net. Just throw a weighted blanket. You're Jeez. good. <laughs> I'm just picturing That'll you work. with one of those life alert things, like calling them, <laughs> like, help, I'm trapped under my blanket again. <laughs> I can't get up. I like... can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. this. Okay, so this thing. In certain parts, because it's got pockets of weights, and if you don't have the blanket right, like if I have it folded over and the two of the weights are on top of each other, it'll make my footrest of my recliner go down. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah. when when they say 10 pounds and 15 pounds, is that like for square foot, yard, do you know? I don't know. I'm okay. not sure, to be honest. I would... 
I mean, I would assume overall, it's for the whole blanket. You know, like that it's ten pound. Like the whole blanket is ten pound of of weight. I, but so I, I would think so. Yeah. But oh they, I mean, I'll, I'll lean in. It's um, it, it's like wearing like but when you lift your legs with the blanket on, it's like having ankle weights on. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, so it's just, it's that type of a feeling where you just, you move slower, you're more deliberate with your movements, and, you know, if you move wrong, you will get a cramp. (laughs) So, for warning, for those of us that are out there that may not have been, you know, in super perfect shape here, it's a little bit tiring. Mm -hmm. So, you kind of have to, you get comfortable, you put the blanket on, you just, you, you learn these things. (laughs) <laughs> now i'm just but picturing gotta... a, a parent putting their kid under one and i don't mean like completely under but you know like you know put the kid on the chair put the blanket over him and be like now stay there <laughs> <laughs> i will say they do not recommend it for children and yeah, they do not recommend not. it for um pets over your of course yeah yeah and and do not put do, you're not supposed to put it over your face at all <laughs> So when you're cuddling under your blanket, no bueno. So, um, but I did get a couple books, um, which is really cool. I got um, some bourbon books. Um, one um, is from Fred Minnick, who actually has a podcast and is probably one of the most well-renowned um, tasters. And like, he's really well known for his palate. Um, and its ability to identify, you know, different whiskeys and the different um, positive notes and all this other stuff that comes with whiskey. So it's really, really cool. So I got that book and I got another book on all the different bourbons that are out there and um, their positives and their negatives and all their palettes and all that other good stuff. So, uh, so I'm looking forward to reading all of that with my blankets. And um, what else did I get? Oh, I. So I have to mention this because going into New Frontiers, my husband, when we started dating, swore that he was going to break me of my crazy cat lady behaviors. <laughs> he would never buy me any cat items. And he got me jewelry our first year together, but after that, that was it. This year, he got me a crystal cat necklace. So, hmm. props go to Hubs. He couldn't figure out what to get me, so he got me a crystal cat necklace <laughs> and a book bag slash purse type of a thing for to carry my work lunch and everything to, to and from work. So, nice. Enabler. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he enabled my cat. Cat lady enabler. Yep, yep. Evidently, the recommendation is that you choose a blanket weight that is 10% of your body weight. Really? All right. Yeah. And they say not to, uh, if you snore of sleep apnea because of the pressure on your chest could um, hurt your breathing. So Hmm. that's kind of interesting. That is interesting. I didn't know that part of it. Either, well, either of those things, but especially the sleep apnea thing. Huh. Interesting. And, I mean, it's... But weights are very appropriate for my size, so we'll leave it there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> very appropriate. I could probably handle a little heavier blanket, according. But uh, only because of yeah. your strength. So my strength, my yes. Herculean strength that right. I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's funny. But yeah, um, but it was it was a good uh, so it was a good good start with my dad, and my brother. Then I had a family. Uh, my mom's side of the family gets together. My cousins and aunts and uncles I had a really wonderful time um, singing carols and um, doing all sorts of fun shenanigans and whatnots with with my family. And uh, yeah. They made the mistake of giving, giving out temporary tattoos to all of the, um, all of the, my generation. So we're all in our forties and fifties. They gave temporary tattoos to all of the men. 
my husband was the first guy to come up with the idea of since he shaves his head temporary tattoo right there on the forehead of course so sure, sure. a little christmas holly you know mm-hmm. right there on the forehead perfect so all sorts of fun and shenanigans and uh yeah so then we ended up gosh what else did i do I had, in between the two, I had a Saturday off, which worked out actually really, really well. Because then I could have a little downtime. Um, my brother left in the morning, so I didn't have any guests. I was good to go. Then sad, Sunday, we had the party. Sunday night, my in-laws came. My father-in-law and his wife came and stayed with us. Monday, I worked. Monday night, I had the house to myself, which was also perfect because it kind of worked out that I had these like pockets of time just kind of by myself. And then uh, Tuesday was Christmas Eve, so another family party. In-laws are back at my house. Christmas morning, Christmas afternoon, (laughs) Christmas night. It was nice and quiet. So it was just a lot of stuff but a lot of time in between too to kind of decompress i felt i felt equalized this year if that makes any sense Mm -hmm. it didn't feel too overwhelmed which is unusual usually i get way overwhelmed um but i was really cognizant of what i needed and just kind of went through the motions um and was trying to be as present as i could and what I was doing um, and where, who I was talking with and what I was available for. And then I was back to work Thursday and Friday. And then this weekend, I did very much nothing. Very <laughs> much nothing. That's not really a sentence, but that's what I'm going with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Made sense to me. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so caught up on my laundry and did all that stuff. But overall, I would say, um, yeah, I really, I, I feel, feel good about everything that happened. I mean, I'm not attacking myself. I'm not falling into bad, my bad behaviors over social events like I usually do. I'm really feeling solid and very comfortable in my own skin, which is unusual for me, but I'm feeling good about it. So great, good. Yeah. So, so the I, uh, the weighted blanket, you take the overall. This is if you're going to make it yourself. You uh, the you get the type of uh, little pellets they use for uh, stuffies mm-hmm. to add weight to dolls, mm-hmm. and you take ten percent of your body weight or whoever you're, you're making for, and then. However many compartments you create, like like quilt, you know, like the little quilted little pockets, I guess, uh, you divide that weight evenly amongst all of your pockets. Okay. I see. Okay. So the total weight of the blanket is the 15 pounds. Yeah. So the 15 pounds is distributed in the little sections. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Does yours look like that? Like, does yours look like it has little pockets or is it little, is it different? Oh, no. Yep. It's definitely, it's got different pockets of these. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually wearing it right now. So I'm checking Ah. little pockets. Yep. I have it on my lap right now. Nice. As we speak. And I will say the cool part is they aren't super warm. (laughs) So so Sharon got herself, there was this huge box. Like, all right, our Christmas was red. Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It was a little much. <laughs> like, I didn't take any pictures of it just because it was just a little much. But because you didn't want evidence to feel guilty about later, or <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so my, I have this cute little purple tree we set up that I ended up putting on like one of my end tables, so it sit nicely. Now, if that tree was actually on the floor, the gifts surrounding it would have covered the tree and you would not have seen the tree it was ridiculous <laughs> now granted many of those were uh, things from macy's that my mother just 
I I had sent her what I wanted, and she said, "I'll just buy it yourself. I'll PayPal you the money." <laughs> so it was yeah, and that's a lot of you know pots mm-hmm. and pans and stuff. They take up big boxes, but there was this one big box, and Sharon breaks it open, and it was the most fluffy, lush, soft comforter you can imagine. I mean, it oh, it, it it's just like like a fluffy bunny rabbit. It's so amazing, right? So she's so excited. She sets it all up in bed. And it was like the next morning, get up. And she and she comes out and she just looks horrible. Like, she's like, I, I need a shower. I like, she sweated so much. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. She said it was like it was the greatest experience ever, but she said it was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, just no. made me laugh. Like, I, I can't, I can't breathe. <laughs> wow! Oh, it made me. Oh, it was so funny. It was great. I loved it. But I, we had. A, uh, uh, I'm just gonna go in right in. <laughs> we had a great Christmas. I even really enjoyed my in-laws coming over and it it's not it's not them it was the idea that i had a free day (laughs) i just want a free day i you know i want to get some stuff done and blah 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 and and i don't want to have to entertain you know kind of a thing and and but i was i was super proactive like two nights before i went and got everything i was gonna make for breakfast I even got us a pizza for Chris, for Christmas Eve, which seems to have become our tradition. Nice. We, you know, and, uh, and so they showed up around like, oh, they were running a little bit late, like 1030 or so. And I'd already started making breakfast and we had a great breakfast and they hung out till about 130 left and I had a wonderful time. And then afterwards I thought I was going to be Mr. Proactive, but I ended up sitting on the couch playing video games pretty much <laughs> yeah, most of the afternoon, I think. <laughs> and I, I had been – people at work have been just dropping like flies getting sick. So it's been like that, OK, I got a little bit of a headache. I got a little bit of this, a little congestion, but nothing ever took, which was like, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, yeah. And then, I, again, I didn't have to work on Christmas Day, which was awesome. And that's why they were they came over but we uh we opened up all the uh my my family does christmas eve um but we've just kind of just decided to do a christmas day thing you know maybe you open one thing up on christmas christmas eve uh but it was a blast because we'd uh open something up scratch up the paper and throw it and Jax would go get it and fetch it back <laughs> he just kept doing it over and over and over again it was so funny but I really, it was, it was fun get, getting like, my sister was just like, what do you want? And I just sent her two things that I'd saved, you know, and it was still fun to get those things. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. didn't feel anything weird about it. Same thing with my mom with the pots and pans, but then like, she surprised me with a Funko pop of a star Wars, uh, some type of stormtrooper, and then like this cute little Darth Vader USB drive, mm. <laughs> like, nice. which is really cute. But it, it was really fun. And then I went back to work on Thursday, which was, you know, we were all pretty much just whatever needed to get done got done. But everyone's minds are, you know, somewhere else. We're, you know, obviously trying to be of service to everyone, to all of our owners, and the place was packed. Like we have tons of people there, but you know, it's not like people are like really super into working. Yeah. You know, they're excited for the holiday, but it felt, you know, kind of like you said, Jen, it just felt right. Nothing too, nothing too far in either direction. And what was really funny was Saturday rolled around and Christmas just disappeared from the house. <laughs> Yep. I got up and it was like <laughs> Sharon just started walking through and picking stuff up and <laughs> putting it away. Kind of like it's the end of the week at a, a department store and they're pulling all the sales stickers down. <laughs> like, Yep, and they're already getting ready for Valentine's Day. Yep. Oh, it was so funny. 
<laughs> uh, made me laugh because I've I've always been like, yeah, I go I can go to the New Year, but all the lights are still up at least. Yeah, just the stuff Christmas stuff went down. But I got to play a gig on Friday afternoon at I've got like a my little bucket list of venues in the area where I want to play at. And one of them was at one of our ski lodges. And I finally got to do that in the afternoon. You know, it's just a packed house because everyone's just hanging out mm. busiest week of the year. You know, it was just a really good time. And I didn't have to do sound. There was a sound guy there. Oh, nice. So when we got done with the gig, I walked over and I was like, here, I'm like, thank you. Give him 10 bucks. <laughs> you nice. know, like he looked at me like, what are you doing? Like the band doesn't tip me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I usually do sound. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You made yeah. my life enjoyable today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I was like, and since it was so early, I got home and Sharon had a bunch of events going on uh, a couple nights in a row so i got home i'm like yeah i'm gonna do this nope sat down on the couch played some more video games <laughs> <laughs> saturday rolled around yeah pretty much did the same thing <laughs> sunday got got home from work yeah i'm gonna get down the basement and list some more stamps for sale yeah i think i'll play some more video games <laughs> So Kara's doing something. Right. Yeah, and and I like I haven't been to the gym, and I I have kind of an excuse, which is because it's so busy there. The general manager kind of wants employees and those of us who get bonus memberships to be there at the first two hours of the day or the last two hours of the day. Oh, right. Which doesn't fit really with my work schedule. I mean, I guess I could go before before work, but. I've just been like, yeah, you know, when New Year's goes gets by and everything like that, I'll I'll go back to the gym. In the meantime, I guess I could, you know, whatever, do some push ups or something, you know, or sit on the couch and play video games, right? Or I can just play video games. <laughs> yeah, that, that works too. I would work been nice. getting a weighted blanket so when you're playing video games, you can work out at the same time. Oh, yeah. I, and I got I got I don't know if you can see it on my bed there. There's like this one of those lean back pillows. I, I can't see you at all right now, Hannah. <laughs> this, is, this is great podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh. Yes, I guess. So I got one of these, like, you know, like where you set it down and you can lay on it and oh, read a okay. book. Yeah, yeah, I have one of those too. Yep. I love that thing. <laughs> yeah. I almost always no, I have a one. a blanket. Yeah, after, like, because, you know, I'm a large man, so those break down for me fairly easily. And, uh, but when I break one down, I always go get another one. <laughs> so it's awesome. I yeah. didn't think I'd love it so much. Yep. So if you're listening, it's a pillow with arms. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like one of those big fat. Yeah. You just put it on a couch or put it against your headboard and lean back and read your book or play video games. Or play video games. There you go. Right. But it's been, I've, I've re really been enjoying relaxing and, not being too caught up and yeah, you know, there's, there's things that have to get done coming up pretty soon. And I feel like I'm just giving myself the opportunity to be ready for them. You know, like I kind of, it's, it's, I feel, I feel very optimistic right now. Not like in a sense of, it's just more, I, I'm, I'm not in any sort of sense of dread, I guess. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is it's probably yeah. that sense. Yeah. It's nice to just not feel impending doom. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It is nice. I've heard yeah. That. yeah, I've heard that. You know, you just set a, set a nice low bar. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, why does my camera keep going off? That's right. annoying. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> oh, it's the space bar. <laughs> Oh, it's, my, right. it's my fidgetiness. That's what it is. <laughs> nice. That's great. I well, was more, wondering about more great that. podcasting for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh man. How about you, Brian? Um. Well, you know, as any good podcast, you know, you guys have made points, and now I bring counterpoint. So, uh, <laughs> my, I mean, my Christmas was good. You know, like I, I was, um. I was kind of like you, Heno, like, like I knew essentially what I was going to get, you know, cause I don't get a lot of gifts anymore. So I knew most of what I was going to get, but it still didn't stop me from enjoying it every bit as much, 
And I think a lot of that's like, I've always kind of been that way though. Like I've always been one that like, if you give me a gift card, I'm just as thankful as if you give me something that I put on a list, you know, cause it's like, Ooh, now I can go get exactly what I want right this minute because tomorrow I might want something different more than, you know? So, um, I've always been, you know, fine with that kind of thing. Uh, or, you know, people always want to give you something that you want. They they don't want to get you something that, you know, you're going to want to take back or don't like. So, um, you know, that, that eliminates some of that as well. Because I'm yeah. really, I'm not good at faking. Like, ooh, kind of a, you know, I'm not, I'm not good at it. So I'm usually like, oh, yeah, that's the thing. But um, anyway, so Christmas was good. It was like Christmas Eve. I went over to my family get together, which we usually have here, but my mom decided not to have it this year. So we went over to my sister's and it was fine. Uh, the food was good and everything, but it, it got really hot really fast because there were so many people in there and mm. I had to go outside to cool down. And I don't know if it was because I got overheated or what it was, but just my anxiety was through the roof for the rest of the night. And, you know, there's kids in there making noise and everybody's talking and all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, no one's doing anything like overtly obnoxious. It's just, you know, what happens when you have a group of people together, you know, it's just the even everyone can be talking at a normal volume. But the the um, what do you call it? The sum of the whole, you know, it ends up being so overwhelming. A clamor. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up spending most of the time outside. Uh, which I, I've told this on Salty Language, if you've listened, sorry. But, um, you know, uh, on the upside, it was like 50 degrees or something. So it was really, for especially for me, super tolerable to stand outside. You know, a lot of people would come out and smoke a cigarette or whatever. And then I'm going in, I'm freezing. And I'm I'm just out there <laughs> for like two hours, you know. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, as far as that goes... But I've been noticing the last few weeks, especially, that uh, my anxiety's really been out of control. So uh, I'm going to, I have to go to my doctor for, I don't know, something this week. I forgot what it's for. I have an appointment, but I don't know what for what. But uh, while I'm there, I'm going to make an appointment with the psychiatrist uh, and talk to them about, you know, what's going on. Um I also, I have a therapy appointment, I think this week or early next week, one of the two. So, you know, of course that'll be, you know, the main topic, I'm sure, uh, going into that too. Um, but yeah, it, it was just on top of that. I also, I, I, I posted on uh, Twitter the other day that, uh, it is exactly what I posted. It said, just dawned on me that my depression and anxiety are worse than I've thought they were. I think I've spent many years minimizing it because I was being trained to do that. Don't let others, it could be worse you into downplaying your situation. And I was thinking about it and, you know, these last few years I've really, really focused on and, and come a long way as far as the like negative thinking goes. Um, but at the same time, I, I kind of think that there could be a bit of a trap in that. In that by trying to reframe everything, sometimes you don't sit in the things you need to sit in or recognize mm. the situation for his, how, how bad it actually is. And there's, you know, different limitations and stuff in my life that I've known about and whatever, but I've kind of just, oh, I'll do this instead or I'll, you know, I'll adjust kind of a thing. And it's like, no, what I'm actually doing is avoiding and avoiding is not actually dealing with something. And then I notice down the road, it's like, wow, where did this come from? I've been blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you've been avoiding it. <laughs> and it's just come home to roost now. And um, I, I don't know. I'm, this is this is honestly what I'm going to really talk to my therapist about more than anything. Because I really, I was thinking about it because like when I filed disability and I went in there, I downplayed it. Um, I, and looking back, it's like, I was like, oh, I was being honest. And it's like, I don't know that I was like, I'm not saying I lied, you know, but, um, I downplayed it. Like 
instead of saying no every day i wake up it's hard to get out of bed i'd be like oh well you know sometimes it's tough to get out of bed you know those kind of things where i'm still trying to put some spin on it so it doesn't sound as bad as it did because i was trying to get out of the mindset of being the downer of a group you know and i i really think the more i've been thinking about this over the last few days that i really think i've been doing this to myself that i've been trying to you know like for lack of a better term i've been just you know just smile it'll be better like i've really been trying that <laughs> like and and i think i've kind of reached that point where i'm like no no that doesn't work you actually have to do some work to fix a lot of this and and there's been a lot that i think i've minimized or i've uh, ignored that i think i need to go talk to my therapist about and the psychiatrist and you know kind of maybe it might i think it might be time for a new game plan that's what i think it is like if that makes sense so yeah and i'll get into that more when we talk about future stuff but so yeah that's I've I've honestly felt anything but balanced <laughs> over the last uh, week. I, I've really been up and down and still really down on myself. But also, I think being down on myself was right where I needed to be because I think that's where it allowed me to see, see through my own um, uh, bull spit. <laughs> and there is a lot to be said for that but don't discount the work you've already done mm -hmm. too i mean there's no yeah, i'm not at all there's yeah you yeah. gotta make sure you give yourself props for the stuff that you have done. yeah no i totally am the, all yeah, all the steps the positive steps you take yeah it's just i think um Basically, it's like if if someone hands you a test and you get an 80% and you're like, well, that's passing. I'm doing good. But it's like, right. yeah, but you avoided all the questions that are actually important to the topic kind of a thing. Like you answered questions. So you got mathematically you're doing fine. Like me, mathematically, I feel like I'm doing OK and I'm moving the right way. But I think there's some major like I'm skipping the essay portion of the of the quiz, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like, hmm. you know, like or I'm not doing the story problems or it, however you want to word this. Like, I feel like I'm just kind of, you know, moving past some of the stuff, even though it's it's it might be. I don't know how to word it. I think I'm ignoring the real core problems. Like I'm, I'm treating the surface stuff, but I'm not treating the cause, kind of a thing, you know. Because it's, it's easier to, as things come at you, it's easier to try to reframe than to fight twenty years of training in your brain. It's easier work, you know. So it's like it's easier for me to eat better than it is to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> this is true that's that's about the best way i can put it you know is that so however that is uh my my win for the week ish range is uh first of all like i said i i, I kind of feel like this is a kind of a big aha kind of spot for me because i do think it's time to change my strategy a little bit um if for no other reason uh much like anything else to keep to keep my depression guessing, if that makes any sense, you know, mm. so nothing becomes muscle memory um, because I think muscle memory leads to complacency when it comes to fighting depression. So, um, you know, there you, you have to kind of try different tactics sometimes because sometimes one doesn't one tactic doesn't work on the same thing 12 times in a row. You know, sometimes you need to mix it up a little bit. Um, but in in this time and not by doing anything crazy or the worry or not eating anything like that. But I've also, uh, cause I have lost about 10 pounds. So, and I, I have been like trying to not, you know, eat as, you know, like when I eat somewhere, I'm trying not to eat all the food. Basically I'm trying to be more reasonable with what I'm eating and trying to make a little better choices and what have you. So I'm actually trying to do it the right way. You know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not starving myself. Or even if I were to starve myself, it would be via a um, like a fasting window concept. I wouldn't be just like, oh, I'm not going to eat ever, you know, like nothing like that. So nothing drastic, nothing crazy, but 
you know. My doctor keeps getting on me about that, so <laughs> I should probably listen one of these days. <laughs> Mine too. I understand. I yeah. I completely get it. Yeah. So. so yeah, so that's that's my week catch up. Okay. So well, now, um, from what I understand, you guys did a little um past and present last uh, last week. So um, I wanted to kind of give my little past um, my take on the on what happened. Um, anyways, so how we came to be. Uh, let's start our conversation here and then we can move into our future. So we'll talk a little bit about that too. How we came to be. Um, I was struggling pretty heavily with um, with my bipolar. Um, I was in a bad place at a place I was working. I was frustrated. I was upset a lot. And I was in a newer relationship. And just trying to figure it all out. And I was really having a hard time with it. And... I came across this idea of starting a podcast and I could think of only one person to do the podcast with, which of course would be Brian. And uh, uh, so we started up together. I approached the idea to him and, and he of course accepted because he's here now with me. Mm-hmm. Well, and... <laughs> once we got the, you know, financial stuffs out of the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. No. I mean, I don't work out all the details. Yeah, I don't come cheap, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we started this podcast. And if you listen to early early episodes of the podcast, you can really hear from both of us how different we are today than we were then. Um, we really grew, we've grown a lot. Um, and just to even give us a little further background, uh, for those who don't know, haven't picked up on it already um, through the podcast. Brian and I have been friends um, since sophomore year of high school-ish, I would say. So I'm going to show our age, folks. So that would be like 95. So do the math. <laughs> A long time. 94, 95, I should say. And Probably she, closer to 94. And she means so. 1894. Yeah. Yes, 1894. <laughs> so it's been a long time. And then um, to bring the curtain back a little bit further, and then Brian and I, uh, we, were in a, we were in a relationship for a good 13 years. So 13 years of our friendship was spent were in, was in a relationship. So we have a lot of history and a lot of past between us. And there is no one else that I would have considered starting this podcast with and doing the podcast with because we know each other so well um, that I think it was a great synergy between the two of us. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> so that sounded like you didn't agree. No, no, I did. I no, I agree with you. I was saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh, that was an agreement. No, no. Oh, like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, um, yeah, so the podcast started and we started off in a little, little rough, a little rocky, like most podcasts start, um, trying to get our legs under us, trying to figure out what we want to do with it. And as the podcast grew, we grew with it. And then came along, Heno, <laughs> uh, you know, met, we met Heno through another podcast that he was doing and he became a friend of the show. And pretty soon, we realized that he's what we needed. Because as Brian and I go along, we have so much history and so much past um, that we've lived through together that sometimes we need this that third voice to kind of jump in and shake things up a little bit and add some, add some spice to our soup. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so we, we asked Hannah to been with us on the show for three years now something like that yeah i think we gave the exact 
like when my first episode was last yeah. week. Yeah, like, something like that. Right, because he was like he was on as a guest first, and then it was not yeah. too long after that, but it was a little while. Yeah, after it was that. like it was like six months later or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, which that brings us to kind of where we're at today with the you know with the kind of format of the show things have changed and we've tried different things and done different things and had lots of fun and lots of laughs few tears over the years but it's been an absolute blast um and it's changed my life i mean i can honestly say that the podcast has has changed so many things about so many ways that I, I look at things differently. I act differently. Um, it's part of my mental toolkit that I use to I rely on for my mental health and to help keep me, keep me on my, on my, my toes, you know, to keep me, keep me on my game so that I can go out and I can fight the good fight for positive mental health, fight against the depression and the bipolar and, all of the stuff that goes on in my head, this is a great place for me to just unload and get it all out and analyze it in an appropriate manner and get some positive and good solid feedback. I mean, it's just, it's really been a blessing for me. So that brings us up to today. So what does this bring us for the future? And no, I'm not going to drop any bombshells about the show not, you know, going away or anything <laughs> like that. We have a very big positive future in front of us. So since I've been talking for the last 10 minutes, somebody want to talk about their future plans first, and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. I I Brian. Yeah, I guess I can. I mean, I already kind of, <laughs> you know, dipped into it a little bit with, you know, uh, starting to talk to the my doctors and stuff about, you know, a new plan going forward. But I've also, um, I've also kind of after talking with my therapist, come to the realization that, um, you know, she she really believes that I should. Uh, try to file for disability again because she does not think that I can handle working. Um, so um, I already contacted or, or sent out <laughs> the problem with dealing with, with people in that kind of industry, like lawyers and what have you, is they're very early in the morning till whatever time people and we don't necessarily run on the same schedules. And it's really difficult for me to, <laughs> to contact, you know, connect with them. But, um, I, I've already reached out to a couple to kind of see, you know, what they have to say. And I need to make the phone calls, which, you know, anyone who's a longtime listener knows is not even remotely a strength of mine. Um, but I, I need to do that and then kind of see where it goes from there. You know, probably, I mean, obviously from there to the next step's going to be probably, you know, an epic ton of paperwork because that's what any of this stuff is. Um, but also, you know, I, I have some other stuff that uh, financially I mentioned a little bit last week, you know, that I'm going <clears> to <throat> have really kind of, kind of gotten myself up a, a mental plan for what I want to try to do to try to help my situation a little bit here. And, you know, and, and the, the other thing is part of it even though I don't consider it any sort of a financial type plan because even to get to the point of even getting a, a hearing or a ruling or whatever, it's probably a year from now. You know, it's not a fast moving process at all. As I learned last time, I mean, once I submitted my paperwork, it was months and months before I got anything back, even saying, Hey, here's the next step. So you know, I'm not optimistic as far as that being, you know, a viable thing, but there's other things I can do to try to alleviate some of the stress and whatever on me. And I, I really think that's a huge goal of mine for this year is to try to find ways to alleviate some stress because, um, 
I understand that I'm, I'm basically so stressed out all the time. Like Jen, you'll understand this. I haven't been this stressed out since we had our shop. And wow, I was mm. running in a Lot. bad place stress wise then. And I know, I know I'm just going to stress myself into a heart attack kind of a situation if I don't make some changes, which is part of the reason why I've tried to change the eating a little bit. When our weather's nice, I'm going to try to maybe walk around the, the area here a little bit just to, you know, try to get some movement and just trying to make some changes that I can do when I can. You know, obviously, I know there's going to be depression days and stuff where I'm not going to be able to do this stuff. And unfortunately, lately, they've been they there's been more of them. But I also know that, you know, stress and depression feed each other. So I have to basically my, my goal is to attack on both fronts, you know, <laughs> try to hit 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 them both at the same time if I can. But we'll see how that goes. But that's where. You know, my that's where the work that I have done comes into play because I've got optimism for these things because I can see how there are some things out there that can help me. And but they can't help me much like we talk on this show at the end every time when I'm like, you know, there's all sorts of resources out there. You just you got to ask for help. And, you know, there's people out there willing to do this work, but I need them I need to let them know I'm a person who needs their their services. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. And kind of, you know, last year, uh, each year we've kind of picked a word for the year. It's like our, I don't know, action word, power word, whatever you want to call it for the year. And uh, Heno looked up last year's and uh, mine was pushing, which, you know, the goal was to push myself into uncomfortable uh, situations and push into my anxiety a little bit. And I really didn't do that much this year. There were times I did, you know, and I, I definitely tried, but I really feel like I moved backwards on my anxiety this year. (laughs) So I do. Yeah, I really do. Um, in this, you can see how you can feel that, but I think it's a year as a whole. You've had a pretty good year. Yeah. I'm judging from the, uh, from the, everything you've shared on the podcast, right. I think you right now you're just having a downtime, but you not to downplay what you're going through right now by any stretch no, I know what imagination. You're but yeah. no, I, I yeah. get it. You're saying it's that basically, just, you know, I'm in the forest. You know, you can't. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I and I get that. And you might be right. I I just don't feel on this the year. I think what it was was I think. Um, I really think I fell short of kind of like my internal goals as far as what I was going to push myself in. And I may have pushed myself in other ways, you know, and that may be where I'm not seeing it. But in the stuff that I was looking at when I kind of made that goal, I didn't really push myself into that stuff. But again, I also didn't get back into therapy until just recently. I didn't, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm, I th- I think I I also think I maybe took part of the year off and kind of coasted a little bit. <laughs> um but this all comes back to what I was saying earlier about kind of avoiding things also is that it's sometimes it's easy with stuff that makes me anxious by not not confronting it, you know, like you don't have that anxiety. So it can seem like you've done okay, but in the end it's like you know, like you, you just avoided conflict or or the anxiety is what i ended up doing so but you know whatever i don't i I feel like i don't necessarily feel like i'm i pushed myself less this year than i did like the year before or whatever i just feel like my anxiety has in our tug of war i feel like my anxiety probably gained some ground this year and that's a big reason why i want this game plan going forward to attack that because i don't I my goal every year is is to just not regress as much as you know I I want to at least hold my ground <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and and I understand you're not going to all the time sometimes like we've said before on here you know this is a this isn't a, a sprint this is a a marathon so and that's fine you know if 2019 you know if anxiety you know 
put some points on the board, that's okay, but the game's not over, so that's <laughs> and that's all I can do is is just you know keep trying here. But again, I'm not um you know, I'm not I'm not going to pull, you know, new year new me kind of stuff and all this kind of all these kind of things. It's you know, I'm not not one to do that. I'm not really a big resolutions person, but I actually kind of have one this year. And th- but this is also uh, for other reasons. But I talked on Salty Language about an article um, that I – well, actually, it was an interview I listened to that was about um, how your brain performs with reading uh, on digital platforms versus in actual uh, books. And how kind of this one neuroscience basically it was pointing out that, you know, it's a use it or lose it meant kind of a situation. And I've noted on here for years how frustrating it is to me that I can't read like I used to. So I'm going to, that is one thing I'm going to try to do is on the year, I'm going to try to, you know, each day or as much as I can try to focus 20 minutes a day roughly to reading again. And preferably in a book, but any sort of reading I'm going to accept because just Again, last year I finished one, in the year 2019 I finished one book, which is just unimaginable to me. Again, you know, I remember the you know when I used to finish at least a book every few days a week, you know, like I, I like I said, I just on a year I'd easily get 50 to 100 books under my belt without trying hard, and now I barely got through one this year. And I got through probably, well, let's, let's be honest. I got through about one and a third books this year. So I'll give myself my full credit. (laughs) I got through about a third ish of another book. So, you know, I want that number to go up because I, it's something that bothers me. I, I'm, it's something I want to be able to do. I want to, cause there's a lot of books that come out that I really want to read, but I don't bother because I'm just like. I, I know I'm not going to be able to focus. It'll take me two years to read that book, <laughs> you know, cause it's a big, thick, dense kind of book. So I want to mm-hmm. get back to being able to read those kind of books. So. Nice. Some solid, good, positive things to, to work on in the future. Oh, I guess if I had to pick a word for this coming year, it would probably be, um, I don't know. I really don't know what the word I would pick for, you know, uh, it's trying to think of, of the word for it. And I don't even know, um, like coming up with a new strategy, you know, basically is, is essentially what it is, but, uh, I don't know. Evaluate. Yeah. Reevaluation, I guess is a pretty good one. Um, but I also don't necessarily know that, like, I don't want to spend the whole year reevaluating either, you know? Like, <laughs> there needs to be action off of that. But, yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, right now, it'll probably, the best I can come up with would literally be, like, attack. <laughs> mm. Because, good one. like I said, I kind of feel like I'm moving the wrong way on my mental health. And there's only you know, and my stress and all that kind of stuff. So I guess, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> Blitzkrieg. That's <laughs> Blitzkrieg. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I think attack is going to be my word for this year. Nice. Uh, I know. So my word, everybody, was fun. And thinking about last year, I don't think I approached the beginning of the year with that attitude, even though I wanted to. Too much hit me Mm. in a row. But by the end of the year with – well, I definitely had fun over the summertime. I have to say that, playing in all the bands and and that kind of stuff. If anything, I I think I probably had more focus – but but I definitely enjoyed myself for sure. And I think at the end of the year was really my win for fun because even, you know, though I was dealing with uh lost my dad and my friend, I think I I feel like I did it all right. 
I feel like I enjoyed life as as life came to me. And it was the one thing about Christmas this year that was a little unusual. I pretty much accepted the fact that I can't go, you know, that I don't go home. And I usually go on Thanksgiving, so I get that family time. But this year, I really I missed being home for Christmas for the first time in a long time. And it didn't have to do with my dad. It had to do with being a lot closer to my sister and my mother. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And and really a lot with my sister. That was a really big deal. I, I really felt like I, 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 I would have loved to be there with my family. But I'll be uh, – pretty much have planned already. I took time off from – we're going to do my dad's celebration of life on the 19th on a Sunday. So I'm going to leave on – probably the 14th at night. I'm taking the 15th off through the 20th or 21st, depending on how quickly I want to get back. But that'll give you a few days to be there, help set up for the party and all that. And and then just basically just jet home afterwards. Um, and that'll, that's the one thing that's kind of on my mind right now. There's other things I need to do, but in thinking of, in thinking of what I see for my future is I already kind of made, I started making some changes in that I stopped playing in the other band. I feel like I want to be more effective in what I do and be able to give more and, and stretch myself out less. And in some ways, I've already started to do that where this is the only podcast I do on a weekly basis. Moving the Needle is every other week. I only produce one of those. So that's definitely pulling back. Uh -huh. Focusing on the one band instead of the two will be good. And I don't. Also, the little the little things where I've I've shared on here that I've felt like I've been snapping too quick. Yeah. I still want to work on that. Mm -hmm. Even today, just leaving town, I felt frustrated driving home. And it's not, it's one of the things that in the mornings I make a conscientious, conscientious effort not to be, you know, I leave work early to leave for work early enough so that it doesn't matter if I'm in traffic or going below the speed limit, I'm going to make it to work on time or even early. And I like that, but leaving today, I noticed my just, we just have a ton of people in town, so it's just unusual. Yeah. But I felt that frustration kicking in a little too quick. And so that's one of the things I, I do, I do want to work on because that's the kind of thing that sticks with me the next day. Those are the things that I have the emotional hangovers from is that kind of reaction uh, rather than taking action is re in and having reactions instead. And then the other thing, which I have not, which was one of the reasons why I don't think I did real well with fun at the beginning of the year was financial stuff. However, I did, I feel good about that. I made it through the year with, even though there, there was a lot of anxiety at the beginning of the year, <laughs> by the end, I didn't let it get to me. I didn't let it cancel going on vacation or, or that kind of stuff. Mm. And, but it is still something that I have to, I have to get back into it and I have to make a plan. And it's something that what I, I love is that Sharon and I are still talking about it. We haven't, we haven't, got to doing it yet but it comes up and that's a great thing that means we're not ignoring it right it's something that we want to you know because we created a debt plan for her and i basically walked away from mine <laughs> yeah, for, for for jack's knees <laughs> yeah right. and the irs um, but it'll be it's i'm ready for it i'm not afraid of it and that's a good thing that's why i when referring to what uh, Christmas and uh, this whole time of year has felt like, it, it, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't feel like I'm in fear right now, and that's a really great feeling. Yeah, I think it helps you know, too I, that you didn't, because um, 
given how you were at the beginning of the year with with the finances and whatnot, it would have been completely reasonable for you to have over adjusted. Oh yeah, right to go from wow I'm blah 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 and then go well I'm tightening everything up and just really yep. cancel vacations blah blah you know or oh, whatever yeah. like that. But I think that's totally where felt that yep. that's where you can also definitely apply your your word for last year to the or for this year to the year of fun, which was you still allowed yourself to have fun, even though, you know, you did have this other, and I'm not saying you ignored it, you know, like you, you still were making payments and stuff. It's not like you were like, eh, I'm not going to pay anything and just, yeah, I'm going to exactly. buy myself yeah. this and this and, you know, so, you know, you adjusted, but you didn't like go crazy on your adjustment to where it tightened up on the whole year for you. So I, I think that definitely was a good move because otherwise i think at this point you'd probably be feeling stressed about overdoing it and that's that's one of the things that i appreciated with uh doing 12-step meeting as far as financial stuff goes is learning this idea of taking care of ourselves first Mm. and that if we start if we start punishing ourselves or restricting ourselves too much or not allowing ourselves to have those those things that that feel good that we're more likely to put ourselves back into that the place that was was not healthy, mm-hmm. you know, back into anxiety and back into feeling lack and not feeling any abundance in life. And then that mental attitude just doesn't help at all. Right. So I appreciate that. That I think I, I definitely applied. I, th- I think a lot of it is like that, that, you know, if, if, if we go back episode by episode, like if I think back to your year, Brian, mm-hmm. I think about all the times you went out and did stuff. Yeah. You know, like you're always talking about going and doing this and that and hanging out here and there. And it's like you yeah. th- to me, you had a year of of testing your anxiety and definitely telling, you know, giving the middle finger to depression. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, and I think you can look at me at, and, and kind of make the same comment, you know, like yeah. if you think about everything that I've said on a week to week basis. Right. You know? And it was, I think like what Which I said I to Jen, you know, like the fact that we're so yeah. in the forest, you can't, you can't see yeah. what, what actually has happened. So again, that's, yeah. that's one of the things I love about doing this is that yeah. whether it's going back and listening to episodes or just like you said, just the three of us being able to just um, offer that insight for each other. Because we see the other stuff, you know, that that we don't see, you know, because it's easy to def- to deflect a lot. You know, like, oh, I don't think that exactly. was that big a deal. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, like you did this or yeah. So I, I get it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So I'm kind of toying with, you know, calm would be a great word for me again this year. I think I've used that before. Uh, but and, and of course, it is some sort of a. I don't necessarily need an action type term, right? But in some ways, I guess focus would be good because it is. It's, you know, like you you were talking about when you brought up the idea of overcompensating with the reframing. Mm-hmm. I think that's such a great point because I can think of what that can lead to, and I've seen people do that. Yeah, where they get so into a bad spot or it, well, and you know, just the life gets tight and they reframe it to the point where they're no longer dealing with the actual, they're not into solutions anymore. It's funny because it's, they're, what I think you end up doing is you go from, okay, when I started, if someone, Oh, how are you doing? I'd say I'm fine because I don't want to bring you down. I don't want to blah, blah, blah. Right. And I think you can actually swing completely to the other side of the, the spectrum on that. And still give the same reaction, right? Because now if I say, oh, I'm fine, that's not only me trying to positively frame things instead of saying not good or (laughs) whatever, (laughs) you know, but I I think you can – it's so funny because I think you can say the same term and you can either be like – trying to to lie in a like I don't want you to know I'm not doing good versus almost like I'm lying – to myself more so but um i want people to believe that i i am doing good you know it's like it's weird even though it's not a complete lie it's just funny how the same terminology can almost mean the same thing on on the positive and negative side of the spectrum here 
It's a weird, yeah. weird place. And I, I think that's what kind of set me off on this uh, thinking the other day was, you know, I, I've said for a long time, like, because of being negative and people are like, oh, you have to be more positive. And I'm like, well, being positive all the time is not good either, you know, and, yeah. and I kind of fell right into something I used to say all the time right there. <laughs> Is that constantly trying to reframe things? First of all, we talked a little bit about it, that it's exhausting. It really is, you know, for, for somebody like me, um, you know, so yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a really, really tough thing to look out for. And nobody warns you about that kind of thing when you try to switch your thinking. And well, I you think know. that a lot of, and this is actually something about, that is reflective of the show. I think a lot of what we're talking about is tools to get through difficult times. Yeah. And so by these are things to bring you to a place of balance. And that I think one of the real important things is any remedy, any solution can go to too far in the wrong direction. Yeah. And that's why like, I want to say focus as my word but I don't want it as the extreme. I want it balanced. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, where I allow myself to not be focused when yeah. it feels right. Because you don't want to be like uh, tunnel vision. Yeah, there you go. You know? That's it. But you do want to exactly. be focused. Yeah, I get yeah. It makes Balanced is more your word then. <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, I I think I think you're right. If I look at the little steps I'm taking, it is about balance, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to that. That is what I'm trying to do. I'm not. I am not trying. I, I'm not. I don't need to attack right now. Yeah. Like I can think of the times where I needed to attack, and and I think two years ago, from a financial standpoint, I needed to attack. Yeah, definitely. And I did. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. and I, and that had to happen. Last year, I needed to basically be very, very gentle with myself and forgive myself and, <laughs> and, and, and be, be okay with that. And I think I, I will. I think that's a great suggestion, Jen. I think balance is a great word for me, is that it's something that, that no matter – of everything that I have a vision for this year is to approach it in that way and not get to uh, a tunnel vision on it. Because if I can do that, that means I think to if I can actually approach what what I have coming up and, and what comes along that I don't expect, if I can approach it all with balance, it means that I did the preparation necessary to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tunnel vision, I tend to get tunnel vision when I do things at the last minute or it's something that now uh, is completely absorbs me. Yeah. And if I'm being balanced, that means I'm doing the homework – that means I'm also I'm I'm not taking things too seriously and I'm having fun. So and you're not I like that. And you're I'll not, go with it. You're not over adjusting. You know, like you're not. Yeah, swinging. I'm not overcompensating. And yeah. it makes a lot of sense because, like, if you think about where where you seem to be at the moment, there's nothing. Like, you're not in a position, like you said, you're not in a position of attack. So, like, to where it's like, okay, this is the year of the big sweeping change for me. Yes, you've already exactly. kind of made yeah. a lot of those, and it's like, okay, now. The waters have been, you know, choppy from the big the big swing. So now I just need to calm the waters, basically, and yeah. you know, stay the course almost. So yeah, I I, I think yeah. balance and whatever is is a good one. And it also allows me the I like the idea of of being you know the, the, having the right to be wrong to be able to adjust. I think maybe if if I approach the year with balance in uh, you know finances and and like making small changes with uh, how how I want to feel at the end of the day and how I acted, I think then if I do that, then maybe I can attack next year. Right. And I'll be coming from a better place. Right. Or at least if you do attack, maybe it won't have to be as um, severe. You know, it yeah, won't be, have exactly. to be a, a huge swing. You can be aggressive, but also throw a jab. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. You don't have How to about you, Jen? Uppercut. What do you think? What's a good word for you? Oh, um, yeah. I didn't have for a those word who, last yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say I... Jen cheated and didn't have a word last year. So. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> I didn't. But if I was going to say, um, based upon my year, I mean, it's been 
quite the year for me, but I think this is the year of patience. This mm. was a year of, of kind of sitting back. I mean, I really wanted that new job, but um, I waited until the right moment. I waited for the right job. The right situation came along. I was very cognizant of of putting um, – identifying and really searching for the right fit for things and really trying to be very thoughtful in my decision making um, this year. So I think it's really allowed me to be, to just set myself up for a good, you know, 2020. Um, And I think my word for next year, uh, this year it was patience I would say next year, I want my word to be present because I really, I I get caught up in what's going to happen next. What are, what's, what's people going to think? What are, you know, what are they going to think? What are they going to do? Who's going to do what, when we're going to do it, all of this stuff, I get caught up in all of that. And sometimes I just need to stop and just, In fact, more often than not, I just need to stop, be present in the moment, and let all that stuff go, and let let the future take care of itself. You know, I I think I over plan, I over analyze, and I get stuck. So instead of doing all of that, I'm just going to, you know, obviously I'm not going to lose track of my of what's you know, in front of me, mm. some things you do have to plan, like vacations and whatnot. But for the most part, I really want to be present, present in the moment and present in what I'm doing. Yeah. Do you feel like you, uh, you were doing a, you were doing a lot of, well, you actually had action too, but there was a lot of obviously thought and planning from a work standpoint. Yeah. Do you feel it took you out of being present? This last year? Um, it, it is something that I, I think that I've grown as far as being present in things this year as well. I think it's actually been part of the process of me um, planning and being very thoughtful. Yet yeah, it took away some of my enjoyment of the moment because I kept looking further ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead, wanting more. I want, you know, I think that took me a little bit out of where I was, but, um, on the flip side, it's, it's hard for me to put in the words because it's, there's comfort in the planning. And so (laughs) as much planning gives me anxiety, it's also very comfortable because it's something I've always done. So it's this wonderfully double-edged sword for me. And, you know, my job is in logistics. So there you go. Hmm. You know, in logistics, it's problem solving and planning. I can see how that would be somehow soothing. Yeah. Yeah. So it it works out well for me. But it does sometimes take you because you're constantly thinking of what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen the next day. What's going to happen the next day that you forget kind of what's happening today. So, because you always have to plan two, three days out at least, if not longer. Right. So so doing that, you kind of lose track of the day. And I think a good example, another example that I think everyone can relate to is Monday morning. What do we say? Can't wait till Friday. Yeah. And we got yeah. days. You are wishing away five yeah. days when you say that type of stuff. You know, it's like, no. How about, you know, let's make today the best day we can do. Let's, you know, what can I do this hour to make it better? What can I do this hour to make it better? In kind of, you know, try trying to... Stop doing that type of thing of wishing away and planning away all of my time and all of my 
my energies in spending all of that in the future plans and the future, what I want to do in the future and stuff and start doing it today. Um, you know, something even as simple as what do I feel like, man, I feel like going to the gym, which I've never been one to say that, Mm -hmm. but why not? Why can't I be that person to say, you know what? I'm bored. I'm going to head over to the gym. <laughs> I'm, you know, and, and I don't have to have an elaborate plan. I don't have to have, a, you know, this huge workout cycle. You know, I'm going every Tuesday, Thursday. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, you know, yes, those are great. Yes, those are, it's very important for some people. And it's very helpful for many to have all of this stuff planned out. Maybe for me, though, I need to start with today, you know, what am I hungry for? I don't know. I'm not really hungry for anything. All right. Maybe I'll have a salad then instead of having a hamburger. Well, okay. That works out. Keeping it basic, you know, Mm -hmm. not super structured, just living for the moment, being in my present and just enjoying enjoying what I have right here in front of me. So that's kind of where I want to p- place my focus for this coming year. That's a good place to be. I like it. Me too. There you go. Cause it is, uh, it's also, you know, goes to, uh, fighting against control issues and, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of things that we've talked about, you know, before on the show mm-hmm. that, you know, it, it does. It's so freeing when you can stop having to micromanage, you know, every little detail because it, it is so stressful. And, you know, and the illusion that control equals comfort, you know, is it, such a, a fun thing, but it's not really true most of the time. I mean, again, like you said, yes, there are some times where you do need to, con- you know, like your job, you have to plan out this, 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 that, you know, you can't yeah. not do that. That is the job, but you don't have to do that when it comes to a day, you know, like Heno said, yeah. that I'm going to get this done and get this done and, you know, or I'm going to sit and play video games. <laughs> some, <laughs> sometimes it's just, that's just it. I, I did that on Saturday, you know, I, got up and i mean and i'm like i should do this and like i do not feel like it and i just went went my room fired up the xbox and just sat there playing uh magic on the xbox for a while (laughs) so i you know it's just sometimes i think that's just what you need it's just whether it's mindless tv or go see a movie a walk whatever it is that is your your jam in that moment you know we all have something that it's just like i just need to not feel pressure to do something here and I just need to be able to just enjoy myself. You know, I think that's a lot of it. It's just taking the pressures off and just saying, you know what? It'll be, you know, it'll happen. Just got to let it go and it'll take care of itself. And for being as easygoing as I am, I am so much more controlling than (laughs) most people imagine. Yeah. And I, I, to give, I'm, to give an example without like seeming like I'm, you know, being mean or anything. Yeah. Um, when we went to Florida the one year, we had what, 10 days roughly. And you were, you were yeah. driving down there and it was so funny because you were like, well, what do you want to do this day? This day? I'm like, I don't know. And you're like, and it would, you could just tell, cause I'm very much when it's vacation time, I'm like, let's just go by, let's just, you know, see what the day does and, you know, just see which way the wind blows us kind of a thing. And Jen was very much like, no, I need to. And, and then when we visited your mom, you know, your mom is that way too. Like she wants to make sure that she's free to do things with us and stuff. So I was like, okay, well. I can't be quite this way because now we're also involving someone else and you know, whatever, but it was just funny how that was one of the few times, most of the time. And I, and it wasn't like a conflict, like we weren't mad at each other, but it was, I could see where my, my approach was visually frustrating her because she wanted to like, no, we have to this, you know, plan things. And I'm like, nah. (laughs) And part of it's the anticipation. And I will tell you, I do love anticipation. 
Yeah. Um, I, I love something's coming up so I can, I, I can think about it. I can, you know, enjoy. Yeah. I mean, just anticipation yeah. and the excitement and the build up, you know, I, that's important part of the fun of things to me. Right. So it, it really there is an element as well. Right. Right. And it is really amazing how, as much as I want to control situations and whatever, that it is when I'm, if there is a, a chance for a vacation kind of situation, I am so, I so quickly throw all of that out the window and I'm just like, eh, let's just see how we feel. You know, like maybe we just feel like laying around in a hotel room today. That's what we're going to do. We'll go get Chinese food or we'll go get some fast food or something, you know, and then or whatever. I'm. And it's my dad was that way. I just remember whenever we went somewhere, he didn't have a huge agenda for stuff. You know, it was very much like, now nah, let's just, you know, we'd go to West Virginia to visit, visit the family. And they'd be like, oh, what are y'all doing tomorrow? And he's like, I don't know yet. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we'll just see how we feel tomorrow. And um, and people are, oh, you got this and this. And he's like, no, no, we don't. <laughs> You know, and I just, I love that. And it's the one time, I don't know why, but I can just, I, it's almost like I can visually see that switch right there of control versus, you know, loosey goosey and just go, man, turn it, you know, like just flip that switch really fast. Everywhere else in my life, it's like, I'm, I'm literally like fighting my own hand off while trying to turn that switch, you know, mm. but, but right there I was like, no, let's just see what happens, you know, see what pops up. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> Maybe this year. We'll see. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we'll see how it all works out. But uh, with that, folks, I think we're at at our time. So we good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm getting the head nods and everything. Awesome. <laughs> but the, the good kind. Yeah. Yes, the good not right. the <sighs> right i'm awake <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes known as the uh tony high yeah <laughs> exactly uh. <laughs> folks if you'd like to consider the kind of i can talk <laughs> if you would like to continue the conversation whew, that was a tough one all right you know what to do you can reach out to us it's the Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook.com is our email address. The Crazy Life Podcast dot Weebly dot com is our as e- our website. Uh, you can reach me direct if you would like on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at my other account, Whitsky Ditz, W H I T S K E Y. Um, and if you want to hear more from me, you can also hear me on Shake the Sheets. It's a pop culture talk podcast that I do with my co-host, Nate. And you can find that at shakethesheets.com. And Hanno, how can they reach you? you can find me on Twitter at Ida Hanno. You can find me on Facebook and Facebook Messenger, Hanno Heiter. And you can check out my other podcast, Moving the Needle Podcast, where we talk about television movies and music and i think our next episode coming up probably at the beginning of the year is going to be about star wars i'm sure mm. yeah and the newest sure. one is uh gross point blank right yeah the latest yeah. one is we talked about gross point blank which was pretty fun yeah that was a fun listen um you can find me on twitter at tsunami you can find my other show at salty underscore language or at salty com. Uh, that show is not safe for work, and apparently, you know, we've now had an episode pulled because it was too hot for YouTube. So, uh... <laughs> nice. And it was because of a link I had in the show notes, is all it was. But um, anyway, naughty, naughty. I guess, yeah. So, um, you know, please go check those out. But it is definitely not safe for work. So check out, or if you listen to it, make sure you have the, uh, you know, earphones in, or you know, no children's around because. It's definitely not for their ears either. Um, you can also find this show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up. Um, we're part of the Tangibound Network, which can be found at tangiboundnetwork.com, and we're part of the Danger Entertainment Network, which can be found at dangerentertainment.net. Um, I feel like there's more I'm forgetting, but yeah, whatever. We've given you enough. 
<laughs> uh, if you feel as though you need help, as always, please reach out to somebody. Um, you know, don't don't wait twenty years like I did. Um, you know, don't you know, like Heno said before, and they've you know told him in his meetings. You know, you can always have your misery back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, please reach out for help, though. I you know. Uh, there's all sorts of people and hotlines and all that kind of stuff out there to help you. You just have to reach out for it. Um, also, you know, please reach out to, you know, friends, especially if you know they're going through a rough time uh, right now. You know, please just make sure they're doing okay or just do something nice for them to let them know that you care or whatever. Um, and, you know, of course, as I've been saying most of the time now, let's just all try to be nicer to one another you know, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's an awesome feeling to do something nice for somebody. And, uh, you know, I saw in the news last night, there was a kid in the, uh, Detroit area that has, I believe he has like elderly neighbors and they had some Christmas decorations out that somebody, you know, knocked over and broke some of them and whatever. And this little kid went out and cleaned them all up and set them all back up. And somebody got a hold of, um, the, the news in Detroit and they got a hold of the Detroit Lions, and, you know, they, they brought the kid and his family to a game. They got to stand on the sideline. He got to meet a bunch of the players and get a jersey. And, you know, you're not going to get that for everything oh. you do, but I still think it's cool to throw somebody a cool thing like that when they do an unsolicited act of kindness sometimes, you know. It's like, even though we don't generally do it, for any other reason other than, oh, wow, why would somebody do that? And you clean it up. That was just nice of the kid, you know, and good on his parents for raising a kid that's going to do that, you know. But I still thought it was kind of a cool story um, that the kid's a huge Matthew Stafford fan, the quarterback of the Lions, and he got to meet him and hang out with him for a little bit and stuff. So it was, you know, a cool story. Cool. Um, yeah. So there you go, you know, and let's let's just all try to be nicer to one another just because it just makes the world a better place anyway. Um, and here you go for, for the upcoming year. Um, you know, what's funny is like my, my, <laughs> my wish for everybody is for less divisiveness. Like let's all try to find similarities with other people instead of divisions. You know, there's, it's just too easy to, to find reasons. And, and if you notice, like, there's a lot of stuff where there's like, Groups of people finding reasons, like, even within, and I mentioned this on one episode, like, in pop culture, Star Wars, this newest movie, is a perfect example. You've got people in that genre now that are basically pulling the Metallica argument of, well, I like the old ones better, you know, like, kind of thing. And it's like, just enjoy what you enjoy. You don't have to be a jerk because someone enjoys the new one. Like, <laughs> can't you just go, hey, it's part of the universe, we all enjoy Star Wars. Like, let's just revel in that. <laughs> Uh, and anyway with that happy new year (laughs) all right folks go out there have a great week and be safe take care of yourself take care of each other